Because God's done some cool shit for me. I told a, I told a, I used to tell a story. I told on some podcasts. I don't think I ever told on stage. But it's a true story. Right when Cat was blown up, like 2006, we had a, we had a show together in 2005 in Akron, Ohio. So we was at a college. And, like, we were, like, in a little room. And there was probably less than 100 kids there. And then six months later, he blew up. Because I remember I got a contract from my agent. They said, yeah, it's going to be you and Cat Williams at the, um, the Frank Irwin Center in Austin, Texas. That's the basketball arena. I said, why the fuck would they put me and Cat in the basketball arena? That shit going to be empty as fuck. <laughs> I said, that shit's like 10,000 seats. And then I get there, that motherfucker's packed, right? And I walked on stage, I said, God damn! I didn't know he popped. And I was like, whoa, this is a different type of audience. Like, there wasn't one W-2 in that motherfucker, man. It was a cash-only crowd. I was like... I was like, nobody prepaid for these tickets. He literally sold 9,800 tickets the day of the show. So then, this is all a true story. So then, uh, I remember I, I, I was on stage telling my jokes. I looked on the side, and Cat was getting ready to come on after me. And that motherfucker had the big fur on and chains. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you was Alley Cat six months ago. <laughs> so then the show's over, and we're... Uh, so the, the promoter had got us two separate limousines. So we're in, we're in two limousines and Cat's limousine's behind me. And somehow he got caught in traffic or something. So he ended up like 15 minutes behind me. So I get back to the hotel and I wanted to hang out for a little bit. So I asked my driver, I was like, yo, can I get the limo for a couple more hours? I want to hang out. And just to be honest, I'm divorced, so I can talk about it now. I had a couple females in the car, okay? <laughs> I thought I was about to pop off that night. <laughs> this is why I could never tell this story when I was married. <laughs> but now, who gives a fuck? Yeah. I had a couple bad motherfucking thick motherfucking sisters. <laughs> Should have seen the ass on this one, brother. God damn. Like, I would have been like, all right. Man. This, this, with this chick's ass, there's not a man on earth that would be mad at me. You know, how the fuck you gonna cheat on your wife? You see that? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, I don't say I agree with that, but I do understand. So, so I got the, I got these females in the car, and the limo driver was like, like, yeah, it's gonna be three hundred dollars for the next couple hours. I was like, all right. So I tried to give my driver cash. He's like, oh, we don't accept cash. We need a credit card. I said, I can't put this shit on the credit card. My wife will see this shit. Why are you cock blocking, driver? Because <laughs> I think I was, you know, I was, I was big up in myself in the limo. Yeah, this shit's mine for the night. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and drink up, ladies. It's all me. So this guy is not bending, though. He's like, nah, can't, you know, we don't take cash. It's credit card only, you know, company policy. So as I'm having a discussion with my driver, Cap pulls up. And Cap gets right in the middle of a conversation. He goes, what's going on here? And I was like, nothing. I said, dude, I want the limo for a couple more hours, man. I was like, but the dude said he don't take cash. He only takes credit cards. And I'm looking at Cat like, motherfucker, I got females in the car. I can't have my wife see the shit on the credit card. He goes, hold on, Gary. He takes my driver around the back of his limo, right? And he's talking to him about five minutes. He comes back. And this is all he says to me. Never stops walking. He goes, uh, he's yours for the evening, Gary. Enjoy your night. Oh, yes, they do accept cash. And Cat walking. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I just remember the driver literally opened my motherfucking door and was standing like this. So now I get in the car. Now he's taking us to 6th Street where all the bars are in Austin, right? This, I swear to God, this motherfucker pulled in the club. I was like, how much money did Cat give you? I got out the car. I was on the motherfucking dance floor. I said, God damn, this motherfucker pulled in the club? So now we, we leave, right? We go, we go back to the hotel. Nothing happened. <laughs> right? 
I'm thinking, like, my flight's like at 10 a.m. It's like 3 in the morning at this point. I'm thinking I'm catching a cab to the airport. Like, this is before Uber. It's like 2006. So, so I get up the next morning, like 8. I head down to the lobby. My driver is still standing next to the car. I mean, just like he was when I got out. I was like, how much fucking money? He goes, no, Mr. Williams told me to take you to the airport. I was like, Mr. Williams? To this day, I don't know how much fucking money Cat gave that dude. I was like, I always want to ask him, how much you give that motherfucking Austin that night? So that's why, you know, I ain't, I ain't got no issues with Cat. I'm a fucking... he, he hooked me up. <laughs> that was a good motherfucking night, motherfucker. <laughs> that was a fucking ball. So, <laughs> that was a good night. I start rooting for the Texas Longhorns after that night. I'm going to root for them. Yeah, I got to. <laughs>